So um, maybe what I'll do with the first slide is just give you a little bit of background about what CNAP is and how it came to be. Um, so um, as you said, it is a, a network of 33, uh, it was 34, and then Woodgreen Community Services um, merged with Community Care East York, so that brought it down to 33 agencies. Um, and these are community support agencies that provide services to seniors. So the kinds of seniors that are services that we provide are things like um, homemaking help, um, help with um, personal care, Meals on Wheels, um, some social work counseling support, adult day programming, transportation, um, social recreational activities, a number, there's about 28 or 29 different categories of services that these 33 agencies provide. Um, and as I said, this network came together about four years ago, and the impetus um, for it was actually that, um, as someone you can imagine, if you're, you know, you're in the home and you have a, you know, an elderly parent or grandparent that needs some support, you know, where do, where do you begin to look for that support? And because there was 33 agencies that did this, but 100 plus agencies that do other kinds of community support services, it's hard to know who do you call and what do you call them for. So the idea was, can we bring this group together and try and make that um, figuring out where to go a little bit easier on people in the community? So um, a group of a, a few of the um, agencies that, that um, had some leadership in this got together and actually applied for a grant um, from the Ministry of Health. So you'll see um, Lynn uh, mentioned here, I don't know how many of you know about the healthcare system um, in Ontario, but the Ministry of Health um, has 16 local health integrated networks and they're really the local planning bodies and funding bodies. So that's the Lynn, so we have one in Toronto. So they applied to the Lynn, the Toronto Lynn, to get a grant um, to bring together this project. And the grant was under um, an aging at home strategy that the, the Lynn had. And the goal of the strategy was how do you help seniors stay at home longer and not go to the emergency department when they need help, not go to the, um, get admitted into the hospital. So everything that we do uh, focuses around helping seniors to stay at home. Um, so um, the goal was that really um, to ensure that when seniors are looking for service that we can help provide that for them. Okay, so the objectives, and so I would say that, that one of the, the things when you, when you bring together a partnership or a network, it's really important to figure out what it is that you're hoping to achieve by bringing that network together. Um, because then you know what kind of structure you need, what kind of programming you need, and, and how you're going to know if you're successful. So I've talked about this whole concept of coordinating services um, for seniors that are looking for support. And this branched out not just to people in the community, but people um, in the hospital that are trying to discharge seniors, or people um, that are the physicians and physicians' offices, so it's not just people in the community. Um, and so one of the main um, objectives was to uh, have this uh, single point of access for services in Toronto. The other thing um, that um, um, benefit, and someone else mentioned that you know, you've got to have mutual benefit, is for the partner agencies, um, as they're looking for clients, is that it also helps them to gain clients because they can get clients through being part of this network. Um, and then, of course, you're always looking to um, look for data to see if what you're doing is, is working, and also as you move forward and you're looking for more funding and more services, you want to make sure you have data, and so data is always more powerful if you've got a collective that is gathering that data together. So certainly, data gathering and joint data management um, was a big objective of this network. Um, and then as well, um, it's always, you know, your voice is always stronger if you can come together collectively. So thinking that the 33 agencies would have a stronger voice in both policy development but also in, in looking for funding and looking at the direction the ministry was going uh, if they were doing it collectively. So those were our objectives. Um, who, then the next thing is that you need to look at, okay, so who are your members and what do you have to do if you want to be a member and, and how do you come up with the criteria? So, for us, um, the criteria for membership was that you had to be um, funded by through the LIN to provide senior services in the community. So that was the first one. And that then you have to provide those senior services. Um, then again, and I think you mentioned protocols and guidelines. So there was a series of protocols and guidelines that were developed. And if you're going to be a member agency, you need to abide by those. Um, you need to agree to submit your data because, again, one of the objectives is you want to have the data. You need to have people um, willing to submit the data 
um, and use the standardized assessment tools and the different uh, standardized tools that we had developed as part of our protocols. Um, the CNAP members as an organization or the network members are responsible for electing um, the executive that, that oversees and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and as well, a really important thing about network membership is that you need to be involved and be participating and be a part of the decision making within the network. So the expectation is that you would attend meetings. Okay. So then um, the governance for this particular um, network is that first of all, the network is accountable to the funder because we do get some base funding for the, the lead agency and Wood Green is that lead agency but also to the member agencies because it is a volunteer network um, and so you have that joint accountability. Um, the uh, structure is that there is a lead agency and as I said, Wood Green is the lead agency and so as a lead agency, um, I'm the executive who um, has overall responsibility to keep the network together. Um, as well, there are, um, we do have, uh, we got money from the Lynn to hire an operations manager who manages the um, operations of the, of the network. We have a, probably the biggest sort of um, success that we, we've managed is that we have a call center. So seniors call into the call center. And so um, those, that call center is housed here as well, um, as well as the support staff. And then we have an executive committee who um, oversees all of, of the activities that we do. So the lead agency, so um, the setup, the responsibilities of the lead agency for CNAP, and um, we actually act as transfer payments. So anytime we get money for projects, we get money for the staff, anything like that, comes through Wood Green and then we disperse it from there. So we act as that um, uh, transfer payment agency. Um, as I said, we have that legal and financial accountability. Uh, we do have a co-chair uh, co um, model where I am one of the co-chairs and effectively do all the work. And then we have another co-chair who, um, that's because, you know, Woodgreen gets paid to do that. Um, and then we have a co-chair that is nominated from the executive committee, just to keep me honest. So there is a co-chair model. Um, and then, um, along with co-chair, then, um, our job is to make sure that we're um, ensuring the interests of the network. Are met. And then we also hire and manage the staff. So that's the lead agency. Then we have the executive committee. So the executive committee meets every two weeks. Um, it is an elected um, group uh, that comes together and really does a lot of the business and so just keeps on top of everything that the work that the lead agency is doing. Um, they provide a lot of advice and support. They approve um, new initiatives and policies. They approve the budget. Um, and so really it is the, the operations and, and sure that that's running well. Um, and then as well as we have committees, that the executive will appoint people um, to committees and make sure the committees are doing the work. Um, the next one. So the membership, I said, there's, so there's 10 people that are on the executive committee, various criteria for being on, it is an elected. There's a few that are appointed like myself because of, uh, by virtue of position, and, and some that are elected um, to your terms. So um, we look at the achievements. So as I said, it's a fairly new group, and um, it's only been together four years. And I would say the last year has probably been a bit of a whirlwind in terms of even um, maturity and, and, and expanding the direction that this network has taken. And I think that that's important when you're establishing networks, is that you know you don't try and do everything all at once. That you know you can start out with one project or something, so you have a success, and you have something where the members can say that there's some benefit to belong. So I would say the first um, big success, as I said, was establishing this hub response team, which was a call center. So that there is one number to call, it's one 800 number. Um, there's one number to call, and um, there's a website, and anyone, whether you're in a hospital or wherever in the community, can call. There's three social workers that, that man the phone, and they will um, do an assessment and link seniors up to the services they need. Um, and then the other thing that happened over the three years was that we developed a number of protocols, um, data gathering, we had a common intake form, um, we've developed a number of guidelines for um, different programs, and the most recent one was the Adult Day program. Um, and, and the other thing, I guess, so, so the, that was the early stage, and I would say the last two are really, as we look at this last year, and certainly just even the last uh, few months, that concept of having a better voice and being able to be represented if you're 33 agencies is that CNAP is being seen both within the, the, the um, 
the Ministry of Health for Ontario, but also in the city, as being uh, a group that is worthwhile um, involving in, in various activities. So um, I have certainly been invited to sit on the expert panel for the City of Toronto Senior Strategy, as well as on the um, Ontario Senior Strategy. So, you know, we're starting to get a voice and being able to influence some of that. So that's the power of getting a network together, having very achievable goals, being committed, um, having some deliverables, and, and being seen to have some credibility in, in the area that you're involved in. Um, and as well, we're starting to expand out with other partnerships. So um, CCAC is the Community Care Access Centers. They provide more of the um, health professionals, so nursing and occupational therapy type services in the home. And so we work very closely with them, um, as well as um, family health teams in other areas. So we also work to partner with other organizations to expand this network out. Shalana, just a quick question. Is yeah. CCAC one of the actual 33 members? No. No. And is there a reason why they're not? Well, <laughs> sorry. No, it's a question. good question. Uh, so the CCACs are, um, it's a really good question because, um, so there is one CCAC for Toronto. So this CNAP is just Toronto right now. Um, and, and there is one CCAC for in Toronto. And apparently, and this was before my time, but there was a bit of a um, um, tension between the community sports services organizations and CCACs. The CCAC is seen, it's a very well funded, very, it's completely Lynn funded. Um, it is um, it's seen as being fairly, so you've got the hospitals funding and then you've got CCAC funding and then you've got CSS funding. And so there was a bit of tension and worry that the CCAC would try and take over CSS services. So initially when the network came together, I think they were trying to establish themselves as a strong group. But uh, certainly, I'd say over the last year, that relationship is, has melded and it's much more positive. And we're doing a lot of work together and a lot of joint projects together. Yeah. So, uh, key success factors. I think you know it's going to, as I said, it's going to look very uh, similar to what you had said. Um, and I think that it did take like so. It took this dedicated core group of leaders to start the network off. Um, and one of them was Jane Piccolato, who was my predecessor at Wood Green. And a number of people that just got together and said, you know, let's do this and, and, and that. Um, and to be committed to spending some of their own time to get it up and running. Um, and then again, you talk about collaboration, buy-in, trust, all of that being for the members. Um, there has to be something in it for to be a part of that. That's why it's clear that you have to make sure you're clear about what your objectives are. Um, that you have to have people engaged. So when you're having network meetings, you have to make sure that you have a purpose for the meeting, that you have some kind of an outcome, and that you're moving towards some kind of common goal, and that helps. Um, it helps to have a funder. Not all networks have funders. So, you know, I've been, some networks are, you know, members will pay a bit of money to get the, the network up and going. Um, and if you're lucky enough to get a funder, then of course it's important to have that strong relationship. I think what you'll find is most network funding, if you do have funders, and ours is the same, is year to year, so you're never guaranteed that the funding will continue, which is a challenge. Um, and your work plan with deliverables, so you have to make sure you're achieving something, you've got some purpose for being. Um, and this idea of the lead agency role, so that you have someone that's sort of pulling it all together and coordinating it as well. And then um, for challenges, um, you know, I think that you, you know, the reverse of all the things that make it work, if they're not there, obviously they're challenges. Um, but I guess the, the few that I wanted to highlight is certainly the funding is year to year. And so in our case, we actually have staff hired, and it's been four years, but every year I'm in the process now of renegotiating our, our project charter and renegotiating how much money we'll get to run the network. So that's always kind of an up in the air thing with networks. Um, some of the smaller agencies we have really struggle to be able to participate. Some agencies are only a handful of people. And even just to attend the meetings, never mind, you know, to submit the data. You know, we get data, some is very much like, you know, paper-based still, and some of it is very electronic-based. Um, and so to really actively participate, sometimes smaller agencies struggle. Um, and collaboration and consensus takes time. So things that, you know, you'd like to do quickly take forever. And when you're in a network situation where you're not seeing each other every day, um, sometimes things that you would hope would go faster take a long time, which is always hard for me. Um, and then communication, like you can never communicate enough and just, you know, because you're living in it all the time, and especially from the lead agency, sometimes you think you've communicated something and you haven't or it hasn't been clear. So certainly keeping that communication open is critical. So that's the overview of what I wanted to tell you about and I'm open to any questions if you have them about networks. 
Is there a website for CNAP? There is. Um, and Sandra says, are you going to put the website up? <laughs> um, it is. And um, you want to know what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you that I am, um, I, I can't remember, it's, it's CNAP, and you, you, CNAP. It, yes, 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 and, um, and there is a website, we are in the process, the reason I didn't put it up, we're in the process of switching over the network, so that's another thing, when you start, first start out, um, they had some money to develop the website, it was from a third party organization developed it, it's a very um, rigid, um, difficult website, so, so you can't change anything, even just a tab on it, without paying $500 and getting it done. So we are um, switching over and actually in-house we're going to do a website. Certainly websites are so much easier now. So we're in the process of completely overhauling the website to make it much more interactive. And with the hope that, that seniors could then just come on, those who are adaptive that or, or their um, caregivers, and, and search and not have to actually call, but you could actually search and, and get hooked up to where you want to get hooked. I'm wondering how you overcame some of your challenges with the smaller agencies, because I know certainly at the lit table, having grassroots and mm -hmm. specific organizations is so important for them to be there. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, that, you know, the important thing is figuring out, you know, what do you need the small agencies to do for you? Um, I think that, um, you know, so uh, connecting out, so Jamie for me and I do, I go and visit and, and understand what those agencies are about and you know, where they are. Um, and, and keep sort of CNAP alive with them and, and what's important to them. As I said, you have to give back. So for example, we ask them to give us data. We need to be able to give them back data, you know, a summary of that. And, and there's got to be a so what to it. So whether that's around, you know, being able to position yourself for more funding. And I mean, you've all heard from the Drummond report that there's going to hopefully more money for seniors and community services for seniors. So we're using this to say, okay, if you send us the data, we can compile something and we can help make the case for all of us together with for funding. So so it's like being realistic about what you can expect them to do. So you don't expect them to be on the executive. Um, making sure they're informed about so what for their membership and understanding who they are and staying connected with them. So do you build into your governance document like a different set of rules around like being a member? Yeah, there are some criteria for being a member. So and it's around, you know, participating, sending, submitting the data, I guess, is the big one. Okay. Um, still being LIN funded. Um, sort of as we introduce a new, so we had a common data uh, or intake assessment form, and that's where the data is based on. So you have to use that format and submit that data. So it's that kind of, I mean, we try to keep it realistic and not too crazy. And then, you know, you get the executive, which are the bigger groups, like, you know, Sprint, St. Clair West, and Wood Green. That, that get involved a lot more and are on a lot of these other big external committees and, and do a lot more of the actual project work. I actually wanted to ask you about the common intake form and because it's something that we've talked about at our committee as well. How, how did you do that? How did you have to get agencies to agree on a common intake form? Well, so that was before my time. Okay. <laughs> And, and, and I mean, it still is a challenge um, because there actually are two, technically two forms. One is the CNAP form and the other one is uh, ISIS. I can't remember the other one, which is slightly, it's more, it, it's the CNAP form plus <coughs> more information. So, you know, it's sort of, you know, you have to agree on a minimum data set that you, that you want people to, to use. For, I mean, probably, okay, so probably what I do know <coughs> from my visits with the smaller agencies is that that, in fact, was something that smaller agencies found as a benefit because they didn't actually have an intake process or form. So for CNAP to actually create it for them and hand it to them and say, this is what you should have, um, was actually a bonus. So for some of those smaller agencies, they were thrilled to get it. And for the larger agencies, we adapted by having the two. You could have the more extreme one that if you wanted. Is there only one line? Um, yes, yeah, so there, again, there's two different ways. So there is one that is online. Um, there's one that we've got, and, and there's a tracking tool in-house that they can electronically send it. But for those small organizations that don't have that capacity, some submit it through fax, their data through fax, and they do it on a piece of paper. Because, I mean, some of these agencies literally have four or five staff, right? Like the, yeah, and they don't have any of that infrastructure. I am just wondering, you know, people at what age to call a senior? <laughs> That's a good question because it depends. Um, and so, so it depends. Um, 
there, some organization starts at 55, some at 65. Um, depending on the programming, it's, it may be older. And, and so we've avoided um, absolutely defining what a senior is. And for us in, in support services, what we're finding is that there's a lot of younger seniors um, that have very, very different needs than, than some of the older, more frail seniors. And so we tend to you know, think in terms of more frail seniors versus more active seniors as opposed to an age, because the, the age is so um, really almost irrelevant. That so doesn't really answer your question. Are they, they don't have any kind of a rule to say senior or something? No, no. because remember, so the, so the yeah, so the, um, the, the network is for, yeah, serving seniors. But a lot of these agencies like Wood Green serve all different levels of people. And some um, within the same programming would, would serve adults with disabilities for maybe younger. So it's really just um, very broad. I think it probably depends more on the actual program yes, for instance than the actual yeah. and occasionally, part of being a senior. Yeah, and occasionally you do get like restrictions placed on funding for a particular program, but it's, even then it's not usual.